So welcome to my uh, presentation uh, called Contention-Free Scheduling for Wi-Fi Networks. Okay. Um, just as Dries, uh, the previous speaker, I will also be talking about uh, interference handling in Wi-Fi. And um, in Wi-Fi, the good thing is that we have spatial confinement of light. So we have light sources with a, a limited coverage area, as you can see uh, here on the left and on the right. And this allows us to create very um, dense networks. And um, this also has the disadvantage that having these overlapping coverage regions result in handover um, and line of sight robustness. Because if you're, if you're only connected to one light source and that light source is blocked, then you don't have connectivity anymore. So therefore, usually we have two light sources with an overlapping area, but the result is that we need interference coordination because they can interfere with each other. Um, in order to circumvent this, in this talk, I'll uh, propose a way to deal with this interference coordination, in more particular, more about the protocol side. If we're talking about a protocol, then we are talking about performance metrics. And um, in performance metrics for such a scheduler, what is important is first the optimality. So how good does our um, schedule um, works in terms of the user throughput and also the user fairness. With user fairness, we, uh, we aim to deal with how the, the data rate is balanced among uh, the different users. And on the other hand, we're also interested in complexity. Because for practical rollout, it's very important that we have um, a scheduling algorithm that has a low computation time and also a low communication overhead. And with communication overhead, we, um, we mean how many messages are actually required in order to set up a schedule uh, for interference handling. And the goal um, of our work and also this presentation is to find a quasi-optimal scheduler with a very low complexity. As there is already uh, proposed, so we are looking at a two-level scheduling approach where we have on the one hand side, we have a, a life controller dealing with the course uh, interference problem. So basically what does it do? The controller collects the neighbor relations and also allocates time channels to the access points. As you can here see on the left, so access point one gets the green channel, access point two gets the blue channel. And then the access points also get some responsibility they get the responsibility to schedule the time slots for their, for their endpoints. Of course, according to some uh, restrictions, uh, they are always allowed to send within their time channel and also conditionally uh, in non-allocated time channels. So this is basically what is shown here. So on the light green, it's also possibly possible that the access point is um, possible to, uh, to transmit. Now, the question I aim to answer in this work is how to set these restrictions. And in order to answer that question, I would like to use a metaphor. It's called the traffic light metaphor, uh, saying that cars can drive in parallel as long as they do not harm each other. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, two cars. They both want to turn to the right. It's perfectly okay. There will not be an accident. So we are happy and we can give a green light. On the right-hand side, the, the cars want to turn to the left. However, turning to the left would create an accident. And therefore there is a red light because these cars need to be coordinated. This brings me to the research question of this work. Can we determine a crossover point for Li-Fi that optimally decides when we have green light and when we have red light? So green light means we can allow two parallel transmissions. For example, here they can be in parallel because the interference among them is quite limited. Whereas on the right hand side, the interference from the transmitter is harmful for the other receiver, and therefore we cannot tolerate them operating at the same time. Well, then what we propose is to uh, come up with a, a rate-based crossover point. Why is it called rate-based? Because we are looking at the resulting data rate. So we have uh, two configurations. So um, configuration one is that transmitter one sends to receiver one, uh, without interference from transmitter two. So this means transmitter two is silent. Um, and this gives us, using the channel, uh, the channel capacity um, formulation, Zoom gives us this... Change. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the channel capacity formulation and we see that we don't have... Yeah. Inter 
Sorry. Ah, okay. I think it's better now. Okay. So we don't have interference in the denominator. Um, however, we have a price to pay because we can only operate half of the time because it would be 50% for transmitter one and 50% for transmitter two. So we have uh, a factor here. On the other hand, configuration two allows the transmitters to work in parallel. And if they work in parallel, of course, they have interference from each other, but they don't have this factor a half because they can operate all the time. And this allows us to decide when these two transmitters can be active at the same time or not. Basically, if RB, so the, the, the resulting throughput in the second configuration is higher than RA, then, okay, we decide interference is harmless and they can operate at the same time. If it's not the case, and therefore it is better to, to silence transmitter two, then we say indeed interference is harmful and we need coordination among the transmitters among the transmitters. Now, refactoring this expression leads to an elegant pairwise expression among the transmitters. Basically, we, we decide if we have two transmitters, we decide when they can operate at the same time and when they should not. Um, and this leads us to, to this expression. And I would like to emphasize that this expression only depends on measurable quantities. So the, the H are the, the channel qualities, uh, alpha is, uh, is a constant, we have n is our noise power, and uh, gamma is an implementation uh, cap, which can also be um, measured. Details are not given here due to the time limitations, but I can assure you that all these, um, all these elements can be measured. So we, all, we, do not know the, we do not need to know the receiver positions, for example. So this is an expression between two transmitters. Now, if we look at the inter from the interfering transmitter's perspective, which was transmitter two in the previous slide, um, if we find an expression for all its neighbors, and for example, here we have uh, a rectangular grid, so we, we, we found this um, expression, which is shown here. So in the spatial representation, we can kind of represent it like a, like a line. And if we do this for all the neighboring transmitters, we find kind of an octagon. And this octagon, is called the harmful interference region. And why do we call it like this? Because if a receiver is positioned in this region, then this means that transmitter two will generate harmful interference. And therefore, when this receiver would be served, transmitter two should be silent. Um, yeah. Now, having this crossover point, we can build a scheduler. And um, as I already explained before, we use a, a two-level approach. So we have a central part, a central part which runs in the central controller, and also a distributed part which runs in the, the transmitters or yeah, the access points. Now the central controller reports the, the measured downing qualities. Um, it also decides, uh, decides which transmitter is responsible for which receiver. For example, here, transmitter two is responsible for receiver three. Um, then it assigns time channels to the transmitters, which are uh, visualized here. And so for example, here we have uh, four time channels and we divide the MAC cycle equally in these uh, time channels. And based on the, the crossover point uh, from the previous slide, the controller can, de can determine which transmitter can be active in which time channel and to which receiver it may communicate. On the other hand, the transmitters, they schedule their receivers within their time channel in a free way. So they can do it uh, depending on the, on, the traffic, on the exact traffic needs and also conditionally outside, uh, the time channel, outside the time channel and thereby adhering to the rules from the central controller. Now let us uh, make this a bit more clear with an example. So in this example, we have uh, a two transmitter network and we have uh, four receivers. Receiver one and receiver three are associated to transmitter one. So transmitter one is responsible for these two and transmitter two is responsible for receiver two and receiver four. Now let us recap the uh, traffic light metaphor. So basically we have the green light, and we have the red light and we aim to decide, okay, what can be happening in parallel and what can't. For example, transmitter one, suppose transmitter one sending to receiver three, then transmitter two can send in parallel to receiver four because none of these receivers in, is in the harmful interference region. So they can be active at the same time. However, when transmitter one sends to receiver one, then, um, and receiver one being the harmful interference region of transmitter two, 
then that means that transmitter two cannot be active at the same time. This leads to the following um, table, which is uh, constructed by the controller. So these are the rules from the controller. And what, what it says is that actually transmitter one can only send within its time channel, but not outside its, its time channel. And similar for transmitter two, only in its time channel is allowed to send, but not outside its time channel. We have to say that further optimization is possible here because as we note that, for example, for transmitter one, actually transmitter one is allowed to, to serve receiver three, which is uh, located here, as long as transmitter two is serving receiver four. So actually also outside their time channel, um, they are allowed to transmit. This is also uh, implemented in our algorithm. Then this brings me to the performance evaluation. So we, we, we evaluate our scheduler in a network with uh, up to 16 transmitters and a varial amount of receivers and um, whereby the controller assigns time channel to the, to the transmitters with a maximum uh, of four time channels. Um, we, uh, we have shown that actually four time channels are enough in a rectangular grid. And these time channels are um, visualized by the colors in the figure. So blue, red, green, and gray. We assume we have static receivers and consider uh, 25 random layouts. And for every layout, we uh, uh, investigate 25 uh, subsequent max cycles. Now, we also compare our scheduler with two uh, user-centric and self-free designs. So these are considered as the state of the art. And self-free means that there is no fixed cell. So um, users are clustered and are served by a set of transmitters dynamically. So it's not about um, a fixed cell size. No, it's about a variable cell size. And this really depends on the user distribution. Um, and the first work exactly uh, clustered the receivers in groups and um, aims to maximize the proportional fairness. MIMO is then performed for every uh, user group. And the second work aims to cluster the transmitters in groups um, and optimize the time fractions of the receivers that are then being served by these groups. And they consider uh, a size of architecture. Again, I cannot go into detail here, but I will show uh, in the next slide some uh, results. For details, you can check the, the, the sources of these works. We, so we evaluate the performance uh, with this state of the art in a network with nine transmitters and uh, up to 15 receivers. And what we see is that our proposed scheduler, which is denoted by the blue, uh, the blue graph, can uh, actually result or results in a good performance in terms of the average user throughput, also the minimal user throughput, and uh, the user fairness index. So comparable to the to the state of the art. Now, what is a, a very different is the complexity to get this result. And what because here I show the computation time, and what I see is that our blue curve has a much lower complexity than uh, the other works. And this is because the other works, they, they try to find all the possible user groups and uh, assigning time fractions to these user groups. But already for, for 15 users, there are around 32,000 groups that needs to be checked. This very complex. Um, whereas we, we can decrease the computation time to 180 milliseconds. And therefore we see um, a very high gain. To conclude my talk, um, we proposed a, comp a low complexity expression to distinguish the harmful interference from the harmless interference. Based on this, we designed a scheduler that takes a divide and conquer approach by first centralizing the time channel allocation in the central controller, but also distributing part of the functionality, namely the time, uh, the time slot scheduling in the transmitters. And we showed that we can greatly improve the complexity compared to the state of the art without sacrificing performance. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm very open to, uh, to any question. Also, if you would like to have more information about our work, we recently have an accepted paper uh, at the IEEE Open Journal of the Communication Society. Uh, so if you're willing, you can also check it there.